you took the time to code your app, implemented all the features, or maybe it is just an MVP. Now you want to release it to the public, but you don't know exactly how. If this is your case, you came to the right place. In this video, I will show you how to prepare and build your Flutter app for production release on Android. We will do the same for iOS in an upcoming video. When you are preparing the release version of your app, for example, to publish it to the Google Play Store, you will need to put some finishing touches on it. For instance, you will need to change the default icon, the app name, sign the app, and of course, add a build configuration for release and finally build the release app bundle or APK. There are many approaches that you can use to implement those steps, but in this video, we will use the simplest one, which is to follow the steps described in the Flutter documentation. Especially, we will focus on what is necessary to get your app ready for release. In a future video, I will show you how to effectively publish it to the Play Store. If you would like to know in detail how to change icons, add splash screens, change app names, check my playlist, prepare and publish Flutter apps. The link will be in the description below. Now, let's get our app ready for production. The first thing that we will do is make sure that we replace the default Flutter icon. For that, we will use the icon launcher package. So let's head to the pubspec.yaml and under the dev dependencies, we'll paste these lines to install the package. This path is where the icon is located in our project hierarchy. For more details about this package, check the link in the description. Now, let's open the terminal and run this command to generate the icons. As you can see, the icons were generated successfully. Before running the app to see the new icon, let's also change this app name. For that, we will head to this path Android app src main and open the android manifest.xml. Here, we will locate the android label attribute and replace its value by the name of our app. Let's say food receipt. While we are here in the Android manifest, we can also set the permissions. For example, if our application code needs internet access, we will add the android.permission.internet permission here. Now that we have changed the app icon and the app name, let's run it to see the results. If we did everything well, we shall see a new icon and a new app name here. As you can see, we have successfully replaced the app name and the default icon. Now, the next step is to create our key store to sign the app. App signing, key stores generation, and why we need them can be the subject for another video. For now, you just need to keep in mind that to publish on the Play Store, you need to give your app a digital signature. Google will use this signature to verify the app's owner. Even if you don't plan to publish your app to the Play Store, you need to sign a release build to be able to install it on an Android device. As I said earlier, to sign your app, you need a key store. If you already have one, you can skip this section. To generate your key store, you will use this command if you are on a Mac, and this one if you are on Windows. Those are the paths where the key store will be saved. In this case, it's in the current user home folder. If you want, you can change this path. Now, let's create our key. Since I am using a Mac, I will copy this command, go back to VS Code, open the terminal, and paste it. If this key to comment is not in your path variables, you will receive an error like this one. In that case, as mentioned in the documentation, we can run flutterdoctor-v. Locate and copy the path after Java binary at. Then we will replace the Java at the end with key two. Let's do that. To escape the spaces in the path, use backslash for macOS and quotes for Windows. Now, let's hit enter. They will ask you a bunch of questions about your name, organization, and country. You will need to answer them, and also, you will need to enter two passwords, one for the key store and the other for the key. Here, you can press enter if you want to use the same password that you entered earlier. That means the key store and the key will have the same password. As you can see, we have successfully created the key store at this location. The next step is now to reference the key store from the app. To do that, we will need to go back to the project and inside the Android folder, create a file called key.properties and paste those lines in it. 
Let's do that now. Now, you need to provide those values that are related to the key store that you just created. The key store password and key password. In our case, we use the same password. The alias is the last word of the command that you use to create the key store. And the key store location, which is the path where you stored it. You should keep this key.properties file private. Don't check it into public source control. Now that we have created the key.properties file, we need to add it to the app build.gradle. For that, we will go to Android, App, and open the build.gradle. Not the project build gradle, the app build gradle. As mentioned in the documentation, we will first locate this Android section and add this block of code above it. Let's do that. Now the second step is to replace this build type section with this one. Let's do that. With those configurations added, the release build of your app will now be signed automatically. Now, one final thing that we have to do is to review the default config section of the build.gradle. The first value is the application ID. It looks like a Java package name. By default, Flutter set it to com.example, that's your project name. You need to change it to your own. For this app, I will replace example by MJS Decoding and publish Android by Food Receipts. This application ID will uniquely identify your app on a device and in Google Play Store. If you change the application ID, Google Play Store will treat the APK as a completely different app. So once you publish your app, you should never change the application ID. The main SDK version specifies the minimum API level, the API level on which the app was compiled. The target SDK version specifies the API level on which the app is designed to run. When preparing to install your app, Android checks the value of these settings and compares them to the device API version. If the min SDK version value is greater than the device API version, the system prevents the installation of the app. Next are the version code and version name. The version code, also called build number, is a positive integer used as an internal version number. It is not shown to the users. The Android system uses this number to prevent users from installing an APK with a lower version code than the version currently installed on their device. So you can set the value to any positive integer you want. However, you should make sure that each successive release of your app uses a greater value. Just keep in mind that the greatest value Google Play allows for version code is this number. Version name, also called version number or build name, is a string that is used as the app version and the main purpose is to be displayed to users. It generally follows the format of three numbers separated by dots. You can change those values in the pubspec.yaml file by setting the version property. The first part is the version name and after the plus is the version code. As explained in this comment section, you can also override those values in the terminal. When you are building the app, using the build name and build number parameters. In a future video, when we will publish our app for iOS, those values will be used to set the CF bundle shop version string and the CF bundle version. Stay tuned for that video. When you will need to publish an update for your app, remember to come here to change the versions. It's mandatory because both app stores use those values, especially the build number, to manage the updates. Since it's the first version of this app, I will keep those values. Now that you have prepared your app and configured everything, it's time to build it for release. You have two possible release formats when publishing to the Play Store, App Bundle or APK. In this video, we will only generate the App Bundle since it is the format recommended by the Android team. To understand the difference between App Bundle and APK, check this post. The links will be in the description below. Now. Let's open the terminal and run Flutter Clean to wipe the build cache to make sure that we will build the app based on the configuration that we set up earlier. To build the app bundle, we'll paste this command, Flutter build app bundle. Now, Flutter will build your app for release and create the app bundle that you will upload to Google Play. 
If you want to test the release version on a device, you can build an APK instead by following those steps here in the documentation. Also, it's good to know that when building for release, by default Flutter will shrink, obfuscate and optimize the app. That means it will make your app as small as possible by removing unused code and resources and also shortens the names of your app's classes and members. If you don't want that, you can set the flag no shrink with the Comet Flutter build app bundle. Now the build has completed. You will find the release bundle for your app at this path. In this video, we saw how to prepare and build an Android app for production release. Soon, I will upload a video on how to publish your Android app to the Play Store. To learn more about how to prepare and publish your Flutter apps, watch this video or that video. Since you made it so far, please give us a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future content.